Thank you very much, organizers. I'm trying to feel it, the colleagues before me. Everybody's with all their strength and energy. So I'm trying to reveal it. Uh, um, my colleagues on the high table, um, Vice Chancellor, Mr. Joe, um, colleagues all. Um, the SRC president just referred to me as his colleague. Last time I checked, I was Minister of Information in 1991 in the Joseph Kruma cabinet in Bull School. In 1992, I was a member of the Students' Representative Council in Forabi. You know, so that's very interesting. It's, it's always a pleasure being here. You know, my love relationship with Unimac started a long time ago. I have been here at similar functions in the past, and it's always very exciting to be here. The reason why I was concerned that we came, I would have not welcomed until Fanajo came in, you know. But I'm very excited to be here nonetheless. Um, when we were in university, um, this was one of the moments that we relished public engagement, public discourse, particularly on public policy issues. We look forward to those moments and we never dare miss one of them. All of those together contributed to our grooming for national service. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I haven't prepared a speech, but I'm going to make a few comments before I get to that speech. I see you were quite apologetic, Mr. Kuruba, when you called us. I mean, will you quickly will do that? <laughs> I'm sure you had in mind a recent parliamentary ruling where it was agreed amongst parliament that government ministers and such other persons currently called honorable should not enjoy that, um, that honorific. Last time I checked, and you very well know this, this is um, the center of learning. Honorable is an adjective, amongst other things. It's an adjective, and therefore nobody should have monopoly over this. Parliament is an honorable house. I cannot contest decisions which in Parliament. You are also aware when we travel abroad or when we meet ambassadors here, we are called His Excellencies. So more often than not, the honorable thing should change itself. Because we are directly His Excellencies appointees, His Excellencies representatives. The same reason that ambassadors accredited to these countries are called excellencies. And anyway, that's for another thing. That's a debate that I look forward to. I mean, we want to have return to a culture of healthy academic debate in our country, as we know that has eluded us for the longest time. So, um, we understand, all of us, that the internet has become a very, very, very important platform by which and through which we do business as individuals, we relate, we build community, and all of that. In many cases, when many people wake up, the first thing they, they look forward to is their phone and probably some mobile credit to stay connected with the rest of the world. So, His Excellency President Julius Maradio is very cognizant of this and has, is very concerned that Sierra Leone, like the rest of Africa, missed out on three industrial revolutions. He does not want us to miss out on this fourth one. As a result, he has demonstrated that Sierra Leone should be able to leapfrog and compete with the rest of the world if we use and deploy digital technologies fully. If you have read the National Development Plan in cluster 3.5, he it, it clearly articulates that the country should accelerate our competitiveness using digital technologies. And in 2018, His Excellency President Julius Madabio, in his address to Parliament, did say he was going to deploy digital technologies, use of ICT, to, to transform the economy to a middle income economy and at the same time to transact businesses. We said it was going to be very interactive. Just a week or so ago, in the 50 or more year history of our country, for the very first time, people in far from remote communities were able to access their public examination results using digital technologies. Remember that? 468 short code. Before now, every people pay 40,000 euros to access their results. Isn't that something we want to benefit from digital technologies? 
you don't seem excited by that. You still want us to be coming to Makini from Kalamba and other places to collect results, right? A very personal example. I called my village headmaster. I went to a village school. I called my village headmaster when results were out and my kids' results. We accessed our kids' results. So I called him. Have you been able to see the results for our village school? He said, no, we have to go to Puto. I said, you have to go nowhere. Just send me the index number. I did the input in and we got everything. In split seconds, every member of the community had their results. So this is the power of digital technologies. But with this power comes great challenges. With this power comes serious encumbrances. With this power comes a myriad of other concerns. So, any responsible government is bound to enact the laws to regulate cyberspace, to protect citizens, and to protect, to provide other related services. To date, we have about 87% of our population connected by mobile voice. He's talking about something like 6.9 million people are connected by mobile voice across the country. We also have about 25% of our population connected um, on various digital platforms. This is a significant part of our population to ignore. In a recent study by the Institute of Governance Reform, it indicated that 68% of, of digital platform users look forward to being regulated. This was an independent study done by Sierra Leone, one of Sierra Leone's most reliable and credible think tanks. 68% of public um, platform users want some form of regulation to protect their transactions in digital space. Right? As a listening government, as a government that has been born in the 21st century, we cannot play deaf and dumb to that. We cannot play deaf and dumb to that. We have to ensure that our citizens are protected in digital space in much the same way as they are protected in real life. I know um, the late former president, Dr. Siaka P. Stevens, had no business regulating cyberspace because that was not a challenge of his times. Former president, Joseph Sain Momo, had no business regulating cyberspace because they did not have one that needed to regulate, right? But every generation comes with its own challenges, so it behoves us to be able to resolve, to resolve those challenges. So that is why, as a digital president himself, President Julius Madaliu saw it important to put in place mechanisms to regulate the correct conduct of citizens and non citizens in cyberspace. Let me share a few examples. You know, I want us to relate on these issues. They are quite small. Uh, how many of us here have not had one form of computer aided offense? All right? or one form of cyber security challenge brought to us. How many people, how many of us here have not had a letter, for example, have not had a text message, right? Emanating from somebody saying, you know, I came for a conference, I'm stranded here, kindly send some money for me. How many of us in this audience have not had a voice message saying, uh, I'm Kwame Yansi, the, the permanent center of Ministry of Information. You know, I came here, I want some money, please, blah, blah, blah. So these things currently permeate and dot our landscape. In that situation, we need to find ways to regulate it. If you go to the police, the law enforcement officers, the only way we rely on, uh, you know, laws that are older than, as old as 1965, you know, offenses against buses or something like that. That's what they will, they will, they will, they will revert to. Because there are no modern regulations to try such offenses. Again, a little bit into history. Um, I think it was in 2008. In 2008, under the previous administration, we had a plane land in Sierra Leone about, about something like 75 kilograms of cocaine, not quite sure about the kilogramage now, but I was there as head of public relations and human resources at the airport. We had no laws, no extant laws at the time to try those offenses. So we had to run all over the place, scoring all over the place, to put in place emergency legislation to try those offenders. So countries living in this time should learn to be futuristic. That's why I was disappointed and quite taken aback when we published the cybercrime bill. Even people who, who should qualify as intellectuals said we did not need the cybercrime bill. That's a shame to intellectuals. You know, this is the place where we can say as we know it. This is the place where truth was meet, you know, um, Broadcast. 
So I was disappointed and taken aback because with all this experience, with all of these things, people still felt we should live in the stone age. We did not need to regulate cyberspace, you know. But anyway, the debate gathered um, on currents. We went far and wide. We engaged here in Makeni. We engaged across the country on the recommendations of Parliament. And I'm pleased to note that at the end of the day, we now have what we call a robust Cyber Security and Crime Act 2021, awaiting His Excellency's access. Sierra Leone wants to join the rest of the world to enjoy the dividends of cyberspace, but we do not want to have the laws that other countries who aspire to be like have in their places. For example, Ghana enacted the Cyber Crime Law since 2014 and not quite sure about it. In the world of parliamentary debates, we have something to regulate child pornography, for example. In Ghana, it's still an offense to possess it, to possess, view, and distribute. Our parliament, by consensus, agreed possession should not be criminalized, but distribution is the issue. Why am I going to set pains? We want to live in a country where we want to prescribe separate and special standards from the rest of the world, yet we still want to enjoy the dividends that the whole world enjoys together. Think about that. Think about that. So, the cybercrime law uh, was criminalized, right? It was problematized right on arrival here. It was problematized, it was criminalized. Sadly enough, by people who have not been bothered to read it, who have not seen it. But that is the, that is the problem will show it across this generation, be the first to click the generation. Once you see it, you run away with it, whether you have read it, you see it, you click like. My own, you know, I'll be read, you click like. This is the click first generation, be the first to click. So I want to challenge um, mass communicators here, as he said, that you are. You can really appreciate this law better than some of the people you have listened to before. Take your time to read it, access it, once it is signed. And I will leave a copy here. Uh, I hope I'm speaking on behalf of my team here. I will leave a copy with the department so that you have time to, to, to dissect it, to understand it, uh, and appreciate the fact that it was unnecessarily criminalized, it was unduly problematized for no justifiable reasons. Yes, indeed. Um, compromises were made on it, a few, a few near assertions were made, and a few things considered by members of the public and MPs as obnoxious were exposed. So, this is the Sierra Leone bill. It is not a president matter in the bill, it is not a radio for a bill. This is a bill to address issues of transnational organized crime in areas like money laundering, drug trafficking, um, terrorism and related offenses. So the fear that many have about the bill is unfounded. Don't say this, those, this is a secret, let me tell you. When MPs raise concerns about the bill, your MPs put their best foot forward. They scrutinize the bill. This when we met at Ibima or Golden Tree, thereafter I went to the well, they had all the time and energy. They look through it scrupulously, line by line, methodically, and very rigorously and vigorously with fresh peers' minds. So what we have here is a collective endeavor, joint endeavor of a very, um, very regulated parliament. So it cannot be a bad thing to say, oh, the politicians are free. Well, the politicians have no reason to be scared. This bill was not done in the Kenema District Council, like I said this morning, which is dominated by SNPPs alone. It was not done in the District Council. It went through very rigorous and vigorous scrutiny, and it was enacted by the whole parliament, taking into consideration your concerns as they have articulated through them. So let us understand that. Let us stop criminalizing it. Rather, let us dissect it so that we don't commit offenses out of ignorance. This is now the challenge we all have. Right? Because you know the age old victim, ignorance of the work of the law is no excuse. You know, but again, it is a university that has failed us over the years. From 1927, Purabi College was accepted. To this day, many of the courses that are defining the world are not being done there. So I doff my hat to um, the, the, the legal minds that are producing, who on their own have made efforts to appreciate this meeting. 
to the extent that it can. Right? Things like, you know, with universities, you must grow to serve your people. You must grow to address the challenges of the times. You know, things like the whole world is talking about climate change. We are one of the third most vulnerable countries huh, when it comes to climate change. I want to see those causes in the syllabus of various universities. You know how now? Nobody's talking about cybercrime. You know, but again, we are also quick to make comments, even when we don't read a bit, we have not seen it. But this too is around. Yeah. So, what are the key objectives of being? The cybercrime, the Cyber Security and Crime Act of 2021 is specifically focused on cybercrime and electronic evidence, both of which are not currently in our judicial system. The objectives of the act include, among others, to provide for the effective, unified, and comprehensive legal regulatory institutional framework for the prohibition, prevention, detection, detention, and prosecution, and prosecution and punishment of cyber crimes. Yes, prevention and abusive use of computer systems. The establishment of structures to promote cyber security and capacity building. The timely and effective collection of electronic evidence for the purposes of investigation and prosecution of cyber crime, the protection of critical national information infrastructure, promote cyber security and the protection of computer system networks, electronic communication data, and programs, to provide for the facilitation of international cooperation in dealing with cyber crime matters and provide for other related services. So, what is this thing we are talking about? Two quick examples. I have this famous, a very lovely example that I always like to share. Um, for those of you who are at team with what's happening in the rest of the world, two recent examples. I'm going to start with the most boring. Um, in Nigeria, uh, the security sector is currently being ratted by uh, in the position by this guy called Hoss Kopi. You know Hoss Kopi? You heard about it? Yes. How many of us here have heard about it? We want to talk about cyber crime, we have all these opinions, we don't know these are perfect, basically, it was no one wants to talk about it. Let us do a deal and find out that we can have an enlightened conversation in the future. Hush Poppy is a Nigerian chap who sat in the UAE in Dubai and made hundreds of billions, millions of dollars, you know, honing people, scamming people using digital technologies. His luck ran out when the FBI, FBI investigations took for him, he was arrested from Dubai. Take it to the US, he is now like Americans who say singing. He's even mentioned uh, the Deputy Inspector General of the Nigeria police, and he has an indictment as they prepare for him by the US security forces. So that is why he is cyber crime, man. Eh? When they say that for what's up, let's just get serious as a nation. Let's begin to think elevated. This is about the whole financial system. Somebody can sit somewhere and wreck it. Right? Personal savings, personal data, and all of these things. This is what we are talking about. Not this pedantic talk of A, B, C. Let us get serious as a country and address these issues wholesale. Let me share one that you might relate to probably more. Um, a couple of years ago, um, the Nigeria Anti Corruption, -Corruption Commission, we call him uh, PFCC Chair Bossing, no rebound, um, revealed in a TED talk that in the course of investigating an offense, some offenses that he was charged to investigate, he stumbled upon. A group of Nigerians who sat in Nigeria in the comfort and convenience of Nigeria and were scamming people abroad. One such was a guy, uh, I've forgotten his name slightly, he scammed uh, a Brazilian bank $254 million. The bank collapsed and the bank covered up now. Ever heard about that? Let us learn to read. This is university. You know, the issue we are talking about, all of you had opinions when we spoke about cyber crime. All of you condemned it, criticized it. But these are the rudimentary things we need to know to, to build our holistic understanding. $255 million from the comfort and convenience of far away Nigeria was stamped from the bank. The bank was not died, they could not leave to see the investigation. And the bank collapsed. Right? If you do not have if you do not have the necessary enabling legislation, how are you going to start with that investigation? How are you going to start with it? You don't even have a start. Remember when we had the cocaine play I mentioned? Yes, this was one of the biggest cocaine haste around West Africa. We had no law to pursue them. We had to rush to Parliament hurriedly, and the Parliament was being called for recess to come and hurriedly put them together. 
together, couple in a few days together, we call God to try this thing and commit them. So it's very important you have a visionary president, you have a president that is clearly clever, that understands the challenges of digital space. So that was it. Today, so how is the hush poor meeting going to be done? In all serious modern cyber crime legislation, there is provision for international cooperation. Because cyber crime is a transnational organized crime, the people who perpetrate those offenses are normally domiciled in the comfort and convenience of other jurisdictions. Right? So you have to have mechanisms, you have to have systems in place to be able to bring their hope for, for to face trial or to try them wherever they are. So in this cyber crime law, cyber, crime, cyber security and crime law 2021, you have clear provisions for international cooperation. Once you access to the Budapest Convention, you will enjoy the full benefits of international cooperation. So if you sit in the comfort and peace and serenity of another jurisdiction and threaten the peace and stability of Sierra Leone, or you commit offenses that will torpedo or hard or hard and peace or perpetrate trans organized crime, you can be sure the long arms of the law will reach you no matter how long it takes. So that is why as students, as scholars, as communicators, it's very, very important no waste of time if you take some time off to read this law and digest it, read it to profit. I encourage the professors here to take some time and lead it through understanding the basics of this law because it's very, very important that we all do that. The other thing, the other very, very important reason why we enacted this law is because it is an international obligation for states to enact laws to protect the integrity of their cyberspace. In 2016 or 18 was it? 2016, former President Roma signed up to what is called the Malabu Accord. All African heads of state signed up in the Pretoria Guinea in Malabu. But the Jamboree is one thing while you are the AU. Once you leave the Jamboree, you forget the rest of the things. You don't take steps to put in place the necessary laws or domesticate them. President Bill wants each and every one of those laws domesticated so that we can enjoy full food you know, of those legislation. So I came in, I took it in my stride, my team and I, I have my technical experts there, I will now wrap up this conversation without uh, giving a special invitation, uh, introduction. So we decided to put these legislations together. How did we do it? It's been a long journey. Uh, when I took over, uh, this was my first outing to the African Union Council of Ministers in Addis. Cyber security was a major discussion, Sierra Leone, you know, they have this naming and shaming session. They put the list of countries that have signed the protocol and not know anything about it. Sierra Leone was up there, new kid on the block, I was embarrassed, you know. But it was all the laws, huh? it comes as a package. You can enjoy the glory and, 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 and suffer the embarrassment. So I made a case for, for support to Sierra Leone to be able to build a resilient cyber security space. So we had support from the Council of Europe, this is a specialized legislation. We came in, we held workshops with various stakeholders. That's why I was surprised when they said we did not consult. Even the very first workshop was attended by civil society bosses, media practitioners, the vast nation and politicians. They didn't spoke to their political parties. This country is a country of many people. I was quite surprised when people said they were not consulted. You remember that? Anyway, so what's this? After that, we have various validation sessions. Okay, so apart from fulfilling the Malabo Accord, we also have the ECOWAS directives that Sarah, that the issue that Sarah Leo is supposed to have implemented. Right? We are, we are a member of ECOWAS, we should be in good standing, we should be responsible and compliant corporate citizens. But we have not been for the longest time. Right? This is academia. Let us, let us put aside political hearts, whatever hearts, and let us be academics. You know, let us tower above the little pedantic political things. Let us think Sierra Leone. Let us really think intellectuals. Right? That's what I'm doing. I'm challenging us all to do it, irrespective of whatever persuasions we have. We came in, we implemented this, so we are now compliant to almost all global conventions. Recently, there was a cyber security index where Sierra Leone jumped over 22 places because we now have the necessary legislation to ensure a safe and secure cyber space. Where people can transact, where people can relate, where people can build community. In the course of building this law, we had cooperation from Facebook and from such other international countries. 
because you have to have laws that will break and implement it. I am not scaring you off. I am merely urging you to be responsible users of social media. Right? Calling for war here, destabilization of this country, and all of that, you will be the biggest loser. This country will lose out. Other countries are making millionaires using social media. They are getting degrees online. They are getting everything they want. Other people are even getting married online. You have seen that? So, why? It's, it's not all human food, but Sierra Leoneans, many Sierra Leoneans, who cannot sustain healthy discussions, will always call for war using social media, will always call for all the things that they themselves are not sure they will survive to have happened. So let us keep the unity of this country whole. Um, what have you uh, It's a longish thing. We have been here for a while. Let me, let me go for a little more. Um, I, I, so students, uh, the first challenge I have given to you is to ensure that you read, you read the law. I'm going to leave a copy here with your head of department and I'll follow up with him. If you want an official presentation, I'll ask um, my colleague, Mr. Bumini Jalo, who has led the technical side of developing this bill, uh, to come and present to your class. He could, he could devote some time for that. He'll be quite willing to do that. Uh, the permanent secretary is here. He, is, he also has very close ties to my team. I'm all about human rights. Again, sorry when I talk about this country, I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about anything that I When we put laws together, Parliament was surprised that I was not fixated on any particular provisions. I simply wanted a law that was in compliance with the Malabu Convention, the Airports Directive, and that will make an accession to uh, the Budapest Convention easy. So, now let us talk about human rights. I've had, a, there has been a lot of songs and dance about how cybercrime law will, you know, violate human rights. Again, let me challenge you, you are students, you are not dummies. Some of these people's opinions you ran away with in the course of the cybercrime debate, you are smarter than them. Some of them have not read it, so I want to challenge all of you to read this thing. This is the most progressive legislation that you have enacted for the longest time, probably since history, is that time. In this bill, we are now guaranteeing parliamentary freedoms and human rights. Before now, before the enactment of this law, if you were investigating your head of HOD, for example, all it required for a police officer was to write to Orange, Kusel, Sarata, or whichever one of you who are investigating this person wants his or her data and correctness. In the current cybercrime law, if none of my boss have been made, most to say, look, there are not clear procedures to be able to access your data. Thus, even the who have and materials, always been there from the start. But because the country has chosen not to have a lighting conversation, we allow this keep short for the catch up to hold free. In this law, there are clear procedures to be able to grant access. Now you have to ask for the warrant that should be granted to you by a high court judge before you because before you can access anybody's data. But even before you are granted the prayer, you are granted the, the, the warrant to, to, to access anybody's data, you have to convince the judge that indeed the piece of information I'm looking for is no beside this particular computer. While you know this is going to be this particular computer, there will be the IP address, there will be the, the URL, and all of those pertinent details. Computer science doesn't lie. So you have to show them to be sure that indeed this is where the evidence is before you are granted warrant. And because of implementing the warrant is to overstep your limit, right? There are prior punishment provisions in this law. There is no other one that has that. Yet the law was being criminalized. It was being problematized. But you accepted that. You created you created part of the answer that because you have not read it and you found no time for it. We are chillaxing too much as students. Let us read, let us engage with the current issues. You are the next generation of leaders. You never know you might be replacing some of us after uh, probably a couple of SFP terms in government. You never know. Who would have thought? In 1991, I was Minister of Education in school. I never once dreamt I was going to become Minister of Information for four years of Right? So it could be you, but we could be the biggest disservice to this country if you don't have a culture of reading. Can we do a deal today that from this day on we need to read and read profitably?
distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this law is there to safeguard your liberties. Nobody is going to sit in, in an air conditioned office to say, I want to ride with for this, I even mean, after I would have left office. Right? You have to go through rigorous procedures to be able to access that. There was the argument over, oh, you know, I listened to her illiterate interpretations of this bill by, you know, I almost grew Some people say, oh, the cops are just, you, you remember those, those very outlandish headlines? 21 things about the cyber crime bill. 10 things about the cyber crime bill. These are people who I don't know where they are going to be so This is if you don't tell anybody. <laughs> so, in the end, we have agreed, Parliament was right to have asked that we brought it in the spirit of consultation and awareness raising, and I'm very proud to have led the charge for the enactment of this bill. Our Parliament have demonstrated they are ready to become a progressive Parliament, uh, joining the rest of the world to enact progressive legislation. You remember the, the what was it now? The criminal libel law? Successive governments, even the previous administration that rose to power, largely on the field, they never once touched it with the bad thing. President Bill is brave, is courageous, is audacious, he dares well on that sphere. Right? This is yet another one. You will not understand it until it comes in. In this law, there is adequate provision to, pro to, to protect copyright, intellectual property. There yeah, are laws here as intellectuals, you ought to be happy with that. So this law is not just about politicians, but unfortunately, because we have not read, we never appreciate that. This is a law that protects your intellectual copyright, your intellectual property rights. Right? That is the point. The other bit is that this law protects our children. You know, you open up WhatsApp groups or what have you, you see little girls below 18 in very explicit sexual conduct with parading for our happy to celebrate. Also, is that how is that the kind of country we want to see our kids grow up? No, let me hear from you. We said this was going to be interactive. Would you like that to be your family member? I can't say that. It looks like some people like it. Eh? Do we want to see our family members paraded on social media? This law criminalizes it now. Even with adults, as long as it's not the consent of both parties to do it, it's criminalized. I think it's so a fine of how many million? Huh? 50 to 250 million euros of five years in prison. Do it. So is that a bad law? Is it a bad law? You still want you, still want, you want a plan check to be doing all of that? To be running a mob? We want a country where our kids will grow up and realize their fullest potentials. Not to be blackmailed, not to uh, be tortured, and not to have their self-esteem, you know, undermined for the rest of their life. This law does just that, all of us. On the final note, sorry guys, I need to just say this last one. You know what is getting tired of me now? No, no. I understand what is getting tired of me. So, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to inform you because during the debate, one of the concerns many raised by many was that we do not have capacity to implement it. This is a government that thinks through every policy. For us, it is not actual past intention. We think through everything rigorously, rigorously, scrutinously before implementing. No actual past intention. We do all of it together. We think through it before implement the action. So what have we done? We have had five commitments from development partners in the first place. Sierra Leone has, for the very first time in history, uh, qualified to host what we call a national attack, national computer incident response team. The hardware is going to be funded, it's going to cost a million dollars. We are not paying a dime for it as a result of my conference diplomacy. And it's in this same hall, among the same student communities that they say, that man has spent uh, $5,000 to go for a conference. You are getting from the conference attendance something worth over a million dollars that Sarah Lee qualified among always have conditions to my have this. So for the first time we have a national SAC. Training has already started. We have started um, ECOWAS through um, with support from the European Union is supporting the training of law enforcement officers and the judiciary, the judiciary and the police. Right? This training has started already. 
trainer of trainers sessions has started as I talk to you. We have eight courses in Ghana training to be able to implement this law. This is not a joke. This is not action pass intention. This was carefully way all the meaning broke up put together. So if you think it's a joke, think again. We will be deploying this in the coming days. The team will return. Before that, you know, they have to go to diagnostic test and examinations, rigorous ones, before they qualify. So you cannot even make it for this camp. Best of are currently training to man the national exam. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this law is for you. This law is to protect your interactions on cyber in cyberspace. This law is to promote your business and to make Sarah Leo, Sarah Leo and digital space safe and secure so that other nations of the world will respect us. On that note, I want to congratulate your leadership for being so quiet. Uh, I bring the subject matter experts here. Just a word of advice. It might be a good idea, probably a feature that you don't belong all of us together. Dr. Tonya Musa is a teacher. I would have taken the whole day on the road. I am a politician and a pop up. You know, my background, I could also take the whole day on my own. Not so sure about the body service man, but he also looks like somebody who could go far with this thing. So in future, please ensure that, you know, by way of advice, uh, don't bring us all together. This is such a very solid thing. You are not going to be able to ask all your top right questions because time is already recording a negative bandage against us. But before I leave, let me graciously acknowledge the presence of my colleagues with whom we have done the heavy lifting all these days. In the course of developing this thing, you know, there were those moments I almost wanted to bring up because the problems were so too much. But I believe in this country. I believe in the best of Sierra Leone. I've seen other countries and I know the potential calamity of this country if we do not have laws to regulate our bread on. So, the uh, the the suited man there uh, in blue tie is my permanent section. Um, and the Minister of Information and Communications, he, Mr. Kwame Hansen. Kwame has had a long career at the Ministry of Information. I'm sure I've told his standard civil service career there. He's been, he's been to various, he helped establish the right to access information commission and various others within the ministry. He's sojourn, he was last permanent secretary at the Ministry of the head plan, fiber cable, um, he has been at the Ministry of Political and Public Affairs, so I literally had to steal him from the Ministry to come back home. Because he has spent two thirds of his career in public service serving the Ministry of Information, so he has a huge institutional memory. He's a valuable addition to the Then we'll come to our go to post, Mr. Mumini Jaro. You know, there's not a day we don't worry about the pressure. by training as over and abroad, or he's the go-to person in, in the ministry. Everything we want ranging from public relations to cyber crime to what have been legislation of data protection, he will be there to serve it. And uh, sometimes I wonder if he has time to rest. Because as long as I don't rest, he doesn't rest and we ensure he doesn't rest. Because I call my I call, I'm, I'm giving a lecture tomorrow morning to give me highlights. Because they have stopped preparing speeches for me now. He said I don't well, so I want you to go from the heart, you know. When they speak to the civil servants, I want you to say that, you know. But when I say it, I want to say what I really think I ought to say, right? So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great pleasure here. Thank you very much. And uh, long live uh, the mass communicators, particularly all that very distinguished leadership of my dear madam here. Come on, come on, stay here. Yeah? Yes. You know, you know, she she called, she literally embarrassed me with calls and text messages. Because this request came in at the same time with the request from Jalan. They also wanted us to talk to me about this. You know. Uh, but I had done, I had given my consent a day earlier. So there's no way I could have withdrawn my consent. So thank you very much for bringing me over here. Uh, on that note, I will not say anything more because I can go on forever. I know Dr. Tonya Musa is already getting jealous that I had the last laugh. <laughs>
Okay, thank you very much. God bless you. This is just a short session. We are going to launch a project which we, the mass communicators, at least championing at the University of McKinney. The project title is Using the Mass Media to Fight Against Littering at the University of McKinney, Unimark, and Sierra Leone. This project basically seeks to address rampant fights of littering within and the immediate surroundings of the University of McKinney. It is a public knowledge that littering is over the years become a common practice by majority of Sierra Unions. But we cannot continue to see this ugly situation post threat to our environment and by extension our lives without taking prompt action. The solution is we are prepared innovative trash bins from waste tires to collect all sorts of recycled waste. We have also started sensitizing people on littering for them to know the dangers and the impact if you litter anywhere. And we have also started using the mass media to launch strategic campaigns against littering. These trash bins are colorful in all. As you see them now in front of you, and the all speaks to the minds of the people. The green is for degradable waste, the yellow is for plastic waste, and the red is for glass or metal. As littering is an alarming is at an alarming scale, especially within the campus, almost everybody litters. Let I forget, let me remind you that these large volumes of plastics we always drop everywhere. They are killing our cherished animals and destroy the environment. Additionally, collecting recyclable waste is a major step to prevent and conserve the environment. Stopping littering is an action that will not just protect our already cherished environment, but it is also create job opportunities for the less privileged and marginalized people. I will give an instant example here. The man who prepares these waste tires and who also writes inscriptions on these tires is a dumb guy. He is deaf and also dumb. Can you imagine this? We've created job opportunity for him and we paid him doing it. So it's great job opportunities and also protects our environment. So before I round up, let me state here that our focus is not just on the money but to also save our environment. So it is on this note, I want to call on the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of McKinney, Reverend Father Joseph Alimami Toure, to at least launch this particular project for us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep on the standing innovation as we to the stage.
lead the way, master. Lead the way, be innovative. And also yours is an interdisciplinary approach. I see you work with the uh, Faculty of Information, the Faculty of Sustainable Development. That's the approach to solving problems today. We don't live in uh, silos. We don't work in silos. Our problems are our problems. So let's have an interdisciplinary approach, a multidisciplinary approach to solve our problem. On behalf of those, on that note, let me take this opportunity to thank you and launch the innovative ways. Thank you and move on, Master. Move on, Master.